Hi, I'm Michaela Weaver and welcome to the training. Um, so the question here today for me to address for you, there are two questions, but one question that I am asked a lot, albeit in a hushed tone, and I know it sits on the lips of many, many more people than actually voice it. And that question is, do you think I might be an And so the very fact that I get asked that question by quite a lot of people means that a lot more people are actually concerned about it. So I'm going to address that question directly with you today in this training. And I'm also going to um, address a, a similar problem. And that is the do I have a drink problem question. Okay, so first of all, let's just look at the term and the word alcoholic. It is a word that is used everywhere when it comes to describing a particular type of person. And you can probably conjure up in your mind what that type of person may be. You see, when I always thought of an alcoholic, I would think of a tramp on a park bench who'd lost everything, hit rock bottom, and was supping something, some fluid out of a sort of carrier bag, probably a, a brown scrunched up bag. You know the type? Yeah, well that's all very convenient for people like you and me who may have a drink problem, but aren't that person. You see, because the first thing I want to say about the term alcoholic is it's really, really very unhelpful. We're talking about an addictive substance. And even if there were such a thing as an alcoholic, which I'm going to dispute in a minute, does it really matter? Because if we have a drink problem, then that in itself is problem enough. But the word alcoholic is a label, isn't it? It's something that somebody is. So I've always been a woman. I've always been left-handed as far as I'm aware. I've always been a green-eyed woman because I've got green eyes. So if I had a drink problem, was I always an alcoholic? I don't think of myself as an alcoholic now because I don't drink. Is somebody who smokes to excess a smokeaholic? Or would you just say that they were a smoker? They just happened to smoke quite a lot. Hmm. And then it starts to get very grey. The area and the line between ordinary drinkers and boop, alcoholic. At what point in that journey, at what point in that did somebody become a boop, alcoholic? Because a doctor will not diagnose anybody with anything physical or mental or emotional wrong with them called alcoholism. It can't be done. So that implies to me that it is actually something, if you can't diagnose it, then how can you have it or be it? If you don't know what it is, specifically, how can you tell that it even exists? And the reality is that it is a word that was concocted many, many years ago that has no truth or bearing given what we know now. You see, at one point it was muted and believed, I'm smiling because of the lunacy of it, it was believed that people who were alcoholics had a disease called alcoholism and that it was genetic. And the reason for that was because, funnily enough, people born into families where around them were parents um, who drank heavily or also did other drugs heavily or to any great extent, also inherited the same behaviour. Well, I think you could probably point to many, many families who were maybe fitness enthusiasts or healthy eating 
enthusiasts, or conversely, people who ate burgers and chips all day. And then maybe their children would be doing the same kind of thing? Yeah. And also maybe if they were in a neighbourhood or, or a society or surrounded by other friends who were doing the same thing, would that maybe lead them to do the same thing as their peers and their friends and their family? Yeah. Yeah. There have been no genetic links to alcohol proven. So there is no genetic thing. There is no such thing as therefore an addictive personality. There can't be. Because if there is no genetic disposition, there can't be a personality disposition because they're the same kind of thing. So there is no thing called alcoholism. Therefore, there can't be a thing called an alcoholic. And if there were, I've already said that a doctor could and would and should diagnose it because this is my story. At one point when I perceived that I had a drink problem, an alcohol problem, I actually went to my doctor and I asked, do I have a drink problem? I'm worried that I might be an alcoholic. I don't know. I just seem to be drinking a lot and, it, and it's not going away. I've tried to cut down. I've tried to change my behaviour when, when I've been drinking so I don't get quite so aggressive or, or argumentative or, you know, whatever. But it just doesn't work. Am I, am I an alcoholic? Hmm. What do you think? Came back the reply. What do I think? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm here. Hmm. Right. And do you drink in the mornings? Um, no, not really. Birthdays, Christmas, anniversaries, maybe holidays, the airport sometimes. No, no, I'm not. A, I'm not a morning drinker. No, no, no. Hmm. Well, it's really for you to decide if you have this problem or not. Helpful. So, there is no medical or physical condition. And even a doctor can't tell you whether or not you have something. It's becoming increasingly likely that it doesn't exist. And also, if there were people who started then drinking, who then became alcoholic, somewhere over here. Do they just wake up one day and go from being a heavy drinker or a regular drinker to becoming an alcoholic? Does it happen at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning on the 25th of January? Or when does it happen? Or is it more likely the case that people start drinking and over a period of months, years, because their tolerance to alcohol increases, they just drink more and more often. And so whereas a drink in the evening may have started at 10 o'clock at night, it's now maybe five with a lunch thrown in. And so if you are worrying about whether or not you're an alcoholic, I want to rest assure you that the answer is no. But that does not mean that you don't have an alcohol problem. Right at the end of the scale, it was so far off it's actually off camera, right at the end of the scale are people who cannot function, cannot function for any awakening times of their lives without alcohol. And these people are significantly chemically dependent. But there are all those other people, all those other people, like you and me in between. Now, I like apples. I like apples quite a lot. I particularly like these apples. And I juice them regularly. I'll probably juice this whole bowl full at some point today. I like apples. But if you took this bowl away from me, I would not bat an eyelid. I'd just go, oh well, that's that, no apples today. That's fine. Hmm. But 
If that had been my wine you took away from me. Ooh la la. Now that would have been a different story. And if I'd got home from work, just let me remove some of these apples. If I'd got home from work one day and I'd gone to the fridge and somebody had had those other five apples and all that was left was one apple. <gasps> oh my goodness me, that would never be enough apple to get me through the night. And so what I'd probably do is say to my daughter, just got to pop out to the shop, darling. Just need to get some um, milk and some bread. Okay, won't be long. And then I come back. And she'd go, oh, hi, mom. Did you get the milk and the bread? As I'm unloading my wine into the fridge. Oh, I completely forgot the bread and the milk. Because the only reason I actually went to the shop was because I needed that wine. I don't have to go without apples for January or October just to prove that I don't have an apple problem because by definition if I had to prove to you that I don't have an apple problem I think it's probably quite likely that I do and isn't that confusing and so you're not an alcoholic but that doesn't mean there's not a problem. Alcohol is a highly addictive substance. 